uh, to our lovely presider tonight, Sister Polite, and thank God for you and for God using you tonight. Um, can we just celebrate all of the speakers who have gone before me? Sister Parker and also Deacon uh, Tinker for, get, for inviting me to be a part of uh, your opening event with respect to you celebrating your 67th anniversary. And I say to God be the glory for what he's doing with this historic church. And um, also before I forget, I just want to also acknowledge um, two people. One, it's just so good for me to see uh, Evangelist Harris tonight. I thank God that I can see you tonight. Just, just to see you and just encourage you tonight. And then also my good friend, uh, Chris uh, Arsenal, who's coming from the Darby Foundation. Thank you for coming from Freeport tonight. Um, all right, so I want to get right into it. And for a few minutes, I want to talk about this particular theme. Get back to the mission. Get back to the mission. Um, yeah, tell, tell your neighbor. That's all right. Tell your neighbor. Get back to the mission. Get back to the mission. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, O oh God, for all the people that we have heard. We thank you, O oh God, for just doing a mighty work within this place tonight. Now, God, we ask that you would continue to just seal it. Uh, with the praise, that you would seal it, O oh God, uh, with your word once again, and that you would teach us through your blessed Holy Spirit, that you would open our ears, that we would receive whatever it is that you have to tell us tonight, and that you would humble us, that we would receive it. We thank you in advance, in Jesus' name. Get back to the mission. So the Bible never uses the term the Great Commission, but this passage is commonly known or referred to as the Great Commission. You're not going to find it anywhere. But what makes this passage important is that Jesus is giving his final instructions to his church. It's important to remember that Jesus had just risen and that his enemies were still ready to kill his disciples. In verse 16, if we go back a little bit, we're told that the 11 disciples proceeded to Galilee uh, to the mountain which Jesus had designated. But in verse 17, we find that when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some were doubtful. Yeah. So that means that some people were, uh, some of his disciples worshiped, but some were still in doubt of what had taken place, right. even though Jesus had already been crucified and even though he had risen from the dead. But this reveals the grace and mercy of God that Jesus still accepted the disciples with their doubt, with their betrayal, uh, and with their disobedience. But this also reveals that God then accepts us with all of our mess. And it was into this world that Jesus commissioned the disciples. There are five principles that I'd like to look at that we can learn about or take away from this passage. One, the Great Commission is the purpose of the church. Yeah. Two, the Great Commission is personal. Yeah. Three, the Great Commission is public. That's right. Four, the Great Commission is powerful. And five, we are called to finish the mission that Jesus started. So let's look at the first one. The Great Commission is the purpose or the mission of the church. Jesus, in verse 18, we're told that Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. The disciples needed to be reminded that Jesus had all power and authority. Romans 11, 36 declares, For from him and to him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. In other words, Jesus defeated death, hell, and the grave. And so with all authority, he proclaims this commandment. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Because he is Lord over heaven and he is also Lord over all the earth. So in verse 19, he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. The great commission then is for all who believe in him to proclaim his name and make his name known throughout all the, the world. In other words, the purpose of the church is to pro proclaim the saving power of Jesus Christ. It is the very mission of the church. Well, what is a mission? Well, Oxford D D uh, Dictionary defines a mission as an important assignment given to a person or a group of people. Tell your neighbor, stay on assignment. You didn't really say that. Stay on assignment. or a calling to go out into the world and to spread the faith. In other words, the mission of the church is not to fellowship. That's not the mission of the church. The mission of the church is not to create programs. That's not the mission of the church. The mission of the church is not to have anniversaries. Oh, God. 
I gotta get to number two. So number two, I got I got excited just now. Number two, the Great Commission is personal. It's personal. Verse 19, he says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. A disciple is one who is learned, it's a learner, it's a follower of Jesus. See, disciple making is a process. Say a process. It's a process in which a maturing believer invests, say invest, invest in himself for a particular period of time. That's a season, all right? It's a season. And what you do is you pull one or two other people who are younger believers. Why? Because you're trying to help them to grow. That's the whole purpose of discipling. You're helping someone else, all right? So you're helping them to grow in their faith, and that means that while you help them, they're going to then invest in other people. served in the Bronx. He brought me to the Bronx to serve at what we call a transitional house. And basically in this transitional house, we minister to women who were either um, victims of domestic violence and or women who were engaged in some kind of drug or alcohol abuse. So I would come and meet with them once a week and I would read the scripture to them, I would pray with them, I would take them to different events, I would just be in quotes, a girlfriend, so that they would have someone to talk to. But then second, I would help them with their budget, I would help them find jobs, that's also the ministry. That's oh, also being yeah. a disciple. That's what urban missions is. And I can tell you that I've also had the opportunity to do what we call street ministry in Brooklyn. I worked in, on the streets, just talking yeah, to people yeah. on the streets. But I've also done homeless um, shelter ministry, where you go into the shelter and you minister to whoever it is that sits that particular day. You just yeah. minister to them. So what I'm saying is that not everyone is gifted in just handing out tracts. Okay? If, if, if handing out the track is your ministry, then you do that. Okay? If standing up and preaching on the subway is your ministry, you do that. But the point is, everyone in here can show the love of Christ. All right? Everyone is gifted to tell the story of how he changed you. We're all gifted in that area. And I've had the opportunity, when you work with unchurched people or you work with unsaved people, they don't really care about our degrees, they don't care about our Bible knowledge. They, they want someone that doesn't listen to them. They want to have a sense that you're not phony. They want to have a sense that you love them. If you show love towards them, then they're open towards receiving the gospel. So that means that we have to pray for opportunity. That's what God is saying to us tonight. Pray for an opportunity. When you're in the supermarket, when you're sitting at the dentist's office, wherever you are, when you're in Starbucks, whatever you're doing, you're catching the train, Ask God to show you an opportunity so that you can minister to someone. People think it's a, it's a formula. I stand up somewhere and I wait and I hand out a track. No, wherever you are, 
God will create an opportunity for you. Yes. All right? So thirdly, the Great Commission is public. We're baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. We've already heard that baptism is a public display of coming out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Yes. But I want to emphasize the whole teaching piece because you can't teach anyone to be a disciple unless you humble yourself to be taught. Okay? Humility is the first step in being a disciple. You cannot be a disciple if you're not able to humble yourself that you can be taught. Okay? You can't teach anybody else unless you're in the Word. So that means that reading the Word of God should not be a chore. Okay? It's not a, oh, I gotta read the Word. I gotta read it. Right? Because the whole point is the Word of God is a living Word. Right? It's alive. So when you read the Word of God, God is actually speaking to you when you open up the book. Alright? So the Scripture says what? That the Word is what? It's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Alright? So when you read that Word, God is speaking to you and you need to be able to hear from Him. So you that means that you have to love the Word of God. Oh, I love your Word. Commission. In order to be obedient to Christ's commands, you got to know what it said. Yeah. All right? So in order to be obedient to Christ's yeah. commands to make disciples, all believers, not just pastors and elders, all of us have to be skilled in the word. Okay? In other words, the, the pastor or the elder, their role is just to proclaim what God has given them, but you in the audience should understand what's being said so that as the word goes forth, you receive confirmation of what God of the church, the teaching is also not the mission of the church. That praise and worship is not the purpose of the church. If it was, we would all have already gone to heaven. All of these things train us, they train us to win the race. They train us to win the race. Okay? Because we, if we were, were waiting for good teaching, we could be where Jesus is. If we want just perfect fellowship, we can go to heaven and have perfect fellowship. If we want perfect whatever it is, perfect singing and perfect praise and worship, we can go to heaven because that's where that's going to be. While we're right here, our purpose is, is to give glory and honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's how we win the race. The fourth principle is that the Great Commission is powerful. Oh God. Verse 20, he declares that lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. The good news tonight is that his presence is power and is the only And 
then tears come to their eyes. Yeah. And they say, please pray for me. Yeah. Please pray for me. Folks, our neighbors are struggling yeah. with loneliness yeah. and addictions and depression. Yes. And it's not just your part. No. Let's get that clear. Yeah. The West End needs Jesus. Oh, sure. The canals need Jesus. Yeah. The East End needs Jesus. Yeah. What am I saying? People that live in the canals need Jesus. Yeah. The single mothers need Jesus. Yeah. Our children need Jesus. Yeah. The homeless people who sleep underneath the boardwalk, they need Jesus. Yeah. Our police department needs Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. life. Yeah. See, if, if we reclaim our purpose, watch God begin to clean up our community. 